Rick and Morty Season 5 has caused a little divide in the Rick and Morty community recently. Some issues have started to arise with the newest season that is starting to slightly hinder the show. For this video, I wanted to go through them and determine what is wrong with Season 5 of Rick and Morty. And I'm not saying that the show is bad or anything, I'm just critiquing a great show that is starting to show some flaws. So for the first aspect out of 5, I'll go into the most simple one, which is the lack of the Rick and Morty pairing. To me, in the earlier seasons, this was one of the core aspects of the show that made it work so well because the duo of Rick and Morty was so intriguing and it had a lot of depth. The best part of their pairing is always the tension between the two of them and how Morty is challenged by Rick which forces him to change as a character. But for season 5, there's only two episodes so far that have that pairing in most of the runtime. One of them being Rick Dependent Spray which didn't really have the best writing and was everyone's least favorite episode and the other being Thanksploitation Spectacular. And in that episode, a lot of time is spent between the pairing of Rick and the President. So again, we don't have that traditional pairing throughout in which we go into the complexities of Rick and Morty's relationship. To contrast this with a perfect episode that has this pairing is the Vat of Acid. Here, Rick comes up with what Morty classifies as a stupid idea, and he thinks that Rick is losing his touch. Which, that on its own opens up a lot of funny passive dialogue, and it also leads into a point of conflict in which Morty is mad at Rick for not taking his ideas seriously. This turns into the classic sequence of Morty living life with a respawn button, but in turn, that teaches Morty that living life without consequences is unfulfilling. Then Rick takes it a step further and introduces that there were in fact consequences with a mind-bending twist. This is an example of what I would classify as peak Rick and Morty. We have crazy sci-fi concepts interwoven with great character building. However, when you look at season 5, the weight of the new sci-fi concepts and their impact are lessened because they don't really affect our characters that much. With the inclusion of the whole family in more episodes or adding in more characters, it's hard to get down to a personal and more detailed level. And this brings me to my next point which is, it feels like there's a lack of meaningful character development or lasting changes that happens to the primary characters. Let's use Morty as the main example throughout Season 5 because he generally changes the most in the show. The first episode is mostly fine and is one of the best episodes, Morty doesn't really change in it but he does go through a badass journey. In A Reconvenient Mort, Morty dates Planet Tina and during their breakup he ends up in a dark abyss of depression. However, this has already been done before in the Vat of Acid episode in which he loses the love of his life when Jerry reverts Morty back to his prior checkpoint and Morty gets so depressed that he kills himself on repeat, which is very dark and to me is done better than Planet Tina. Also, the fact that Morty's more depressed mindset doesn't carry over between episodes really downplays the importance of his breakup. It makes it seem meaningless when at the start of the next episode Morty seems completely fine. If there was more continuity, I feel like it would help the characters be more dynamic instead of just reverting back to their normal state. Because in season 1 and 2, Morty changes throughout those seasons, but in the later seasons, it feels like Morty is in more of a default state of being more hardened and independent. The only episode for season 5 in terms of character development that I think is really good is Rickternal Friendshine of the Spotless Mort, in which Rick tries to save his best friend, Birdperson. It really shows how dedicated Rick is towards people he cares about, while simultaneously showing how selfish she is at the end. And it also helps that this episode expands the lore quite a bit, while moving the bird person subplot forward. I know we can't have this type of development all the time, but what I really want is more connections and carryovers between episodes, so that any character or story development is more relevant and not most of the season being comprised of one-offs. For the next aspect of what's wrong with Season 5, we have pacing. And by that I mean that the pacing for some of the episodes is way too fast. I don't have this problem with the earlier seasons, but now some of the episodes feel like they are rushing through dialogue, jokes, or just rapidly going from crazy moment to crazy moment without giving enough breathing room. The best example of this is in Rick Dependent Spray. During the build up to the climax of the episode, we quickly go from getting captured by Morty's sperm getting saved by Sticky, revealing that the sperm are heading towards the human egg, the twist reveal that it will make an incest baby because it's Summer's egg, to then randomly getting captured by cannibalistic horse people. And this all happens in 3 minutes. You would think that would take place over about 10 minutes, but 3 minutes is straight up a breakneck pace. It becomes overloading very quickly when going through that much material in that short amount of time. 
That, and without a slower pace, most of the jokes and dialogue don't have enough time to land because the characters are quickly moving on to something else, or just being interrupted by something. Another episode with rushed pacing is the Thanksploitation Spectacular. I won't list out everything that happens, but in terms of plot and story events, the episode is so ambitious to the point that in order to fit the entire story into a 20 minute time slot, the pace has to move extremely fast. The overall turkey takeover is a fun concept, but the episode is way too packed full of plot points for its own good. If the episode was longer and was instead 30 to 40 minutes, then the pace wouldn't need to be rushed to fit everything into a 20 minute format. Also, this issue of pacing doesn't apply to every episode in season 5, and some of them do take their time, like Ricternal Friendshine. To me, that is one of the better episodes because the full 20 minutes is directly focused on one simple objective which is saving Bird Person. Which from there, that simple concept can then blossom into a more complex episode without it feeling overwhelming. Unlike Thanksploitation and Rick Dependent Spray, where there's a constant rotation of different objectives and obstacles to the point of it becoming tiring. On to the next aspect, we have Rick being written to be more underpowered. Due to each episode being written by a different writer, some of the writers make it to where Rick is conveniently weaker than what he should be to justify conflict within an episode. A good example of this is Rick's intelligence. There are two instances where the driving conflict is because Rick didn't notice something that he should have. Like, in the Giltron episode, Rick clearly took out the anime people and stole their mechs. And later on in the episode, he chooses to trust the anime people he betrayed more than his own family. Which leads to Rick getting betrayed, and the fact that he didn't see that coming or was a part of some kind of plan of his is pretty infuriating given how smart he used to be. You can argue that he made those mistakes because he was drunk, but Rick was drunk throughout the first season and he never came across as being that stupid. He does make mistakes every now and then like in Rick Potion, but that was in a very difficult field of knowledge of making a complicated antidote. Meanwhile in Giltron, he makes an obvious mistake of trusting people that are clearly untrustworthy. Then we also have the instance in Rick Dependent Spray in which Morty successfully lies to Rick about his sperm being in the horse sperm container. In the moment, Rick notices that something is weird about Morty stopping him from checking his horse sperm, but he just doesn't think anything of it. Maybe this moment would work if the audience didn't know that Morty's sperm was in there, and this was a small detail that we also missed along with Rick. But since we know that information, we expect Rick to figure it out and to have a revelation that this has been a funny lesson for Morty all along. Instead of being shocked and not knowing that it was clearly Morty's sperm. Or even a smaller example where Rick is clearly being taken advantage of by this hot alien, while Summer is constantly telling him that, to then Rick still getting surprised that he got betrayed. This goes into the territory of contrived writing due to Rick doing things or acting in a manner that is out of character, just for events in the story to happen. And I find it funny that Dan Harmon even admitted this in an interview for Inside the Episode. The episode starts with the heaviest amount of contrivance in the, in the world. By the way, this is just the intelligence side of the coin because Rick has also become underpowered in terms of solving problems. Like him getting saved by Mr. Nimbus when all of his weapons were taken away. And to make up for that, there was a funny fourth wall break joke. But then we also have Rick getting outsmarted by Morty's sperm, and also having to get saved by it. Getting saved by a random horse lover, which also results in him controlling the horses conveniently. Getting outsmarted by the president when he identified them as undercover turkeys. To then getting saved by the president two minutes later. And then they even copy the joke from the first episode of Rick losing his weapon since he was a turkey for too long. I can go on, but Rick seems to be nerfed so that other characters can take the spotlight. But while doing so, Rick loses some of his charm from the earlier seasons. He used to be an uncontrolled badass who didn't need anyone and was smart enough and strong enough to overcome any obstacles that came at him. Sure, every now and then an obstacle is overcome in a silly way or through a manner of deus ex machina mechanics, but that still builds him up as being a godlike force to be reckoned with. And I know that you need to limit your heroes to challenge them at times, but a lot of recent instances has been Rick getting saved by other people instead of him creatively solving the problems. Like Rick getting saved by a giant incest baby. But then even in the same season, we have Rick creatively solving the problem of hurting the demons in hell. So the inconsistency in writing is very apparent this season, which also leads into the next point which is, we have a writing team that's almost entirely new. For this point, I'm not saying that the writing in Rick and Morty is bad now, but in some episodes, the quality seems to take a bit of a dive. 
For example, the four lowest rated episodes of the season, and even the entire show, are written by writers who have written very little for the show before. And that probably is not a coincidence. But yeah, there are no more writers that are remaining from the first three seasons. Like one of the best writers for the show, Mike McMahon, who is responsible for writing the Rick Shank Redemption in Total Recall, has left and moved on to being a creator for different shows. And this is the case for all the regular writers of the earlier seasons. As to why they left, there could be multiple reasons, but it probably revolves around money. But going back to the quality of season 5, I don't think the newer writers have as good as an understanding as the original writers did. The breakneck pacing, issues with character development, character pairings, concept development, and other small writing mistakes like it being contrived at times didn't used to be that big of an issue. All of these flaws aren't that massive to really call the show bad or even mediocre really, it just makes the show feel not as good as it once was. Sure, there are some flaws, but there is still a lot to like and hopefully the last two episodes are going to be great since they are taking a hiatus for them. And I'm also making this video before they come out. Overall though, I just wanted to make this video to point out some of the flaws I have with Season 5. If none of these flaws bother you, then that's completely fine. But regardless though, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments what you think about Season 5 of Rick and Morty.